Hi folks, Rob back in some of Rob plays. And this week we've got Zamzara, which I'm gonna mess this up because I'm terrible. But it is Yuka Tapani Maki, who's the chap who worked on games like Octopolis, Netherworld, um, Moonfall, quite a few others. Uh, excellently regarded Finnish uh, 64 character. This was published by Racket, Houston's budget level in 1989, and had actually quite an interesting development. Um, we'll sort of talk about it as we get in. So, there's not much of a story to it. The basic idea is you're this alien dude, and you've got 15 minutes to bust out of this facility, and just pretty much take everything out on the way. Now, it's a bit flimsy because the actual development of this was really, um, it was actually a bit of a troubled development. Essentially what happened was he designed a game, his original concept was sort of like a sci-fi impossible mission. Um, you, you explored these stages, you can see why there's an exit above your starts position is because all these little sections are interlinked and the idea was to create a sort of big map that you'd explore and find um, like genetic pieces and whatnot. So the idea was sort of an exploration-y action game. And when I was pitched to Houston, um, they... The first part of it they didn't really like. They thought it was a bit too... Um, a bit too complex, which is fair enough. I mean, I guess targeting the 8-bits at this point probably... You know, the, the more cerebral games weren't really going to sell. So that was something. Ugh. It's actually... And so, um, he went back to the drawing board and he reworked the design and some other bits and pieces on it. And... And essentially, you know, they didn't like Take 2. So Take 1, not really what they wanted. Didn't quite work out. So Take 2 happened and redesigned to be a bit slower, a bit more adventure-like. And, um, you know, the ruling on that was it was a bit too boring. So he sort of just gutted the game, turned it into this just run-and-gun shooter. And and so it ended up being released on their budget, on, on Racket, the budget level. Which, a bit of a shame, actually, because thanks to, well, another shout-out to the awesome people at Games That Work, they actually managed to get some of the original um, stuff from V1, some of the design stuff, and another chap actually kind of reassembled it into a... Uh, this is one of those games I love, but it kind of reassembled it into a sort of more playable form. Um, I will throw a link in the video description where you can check that out, and a lot more details on, you know, phase... Uh, game over. On its development. And I've just sat there and completely had a run and gotten creamed in this game in three minutes while I've tried to explain why it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so. Let's go back for another run. Pop my name in. And so the big thing is you've got four weapons. You've got your, your rapid fire blaster. You've got the photon laser, which does the arcing. You've got the nuclear laser. And then you've got your web mine, which is very handy. You've also got missiles, and use fucking keys to select those, force, those first four weapons. And to use your missiles, you just hold down the space bar. You see the icon blinking, and then you hit fire. I don't really need to waste the missile here. And so the idea is you run just blast stuff, try not to die. You can sort of see your energy bar is those green squares, and I've already lost like a third of them, close to half. Then you get to the exit. And like I said, you've got 15 minutes to sort of avoid everything. <laughs> now, the web mines are probably really useful because... The web mines are really useful because they actually block stuff and let you pass. So you've got to really... A lot of things in this game is actually picking the right kind of weapon to avoid being damaged. Because if you're not careful, well, you'll just be... You'll be shredded instantly, so... So you've got to really sort of like judge your movements, which I actually really appreciate. I like the fact that 
you know, it is a, it is you know, a run and gun action game, but there's something a little cerebrally to it, despite being, you know, despite being gutted. I mean, you got to be honest, when a game's been gutted that heavily and had sort of a form of development help, you usually expect it to be a total and utter disaster. And here it's like, it's actually, oh, just like, okay, that's one life down. You actually you expect it to be a total and utter disaster. Like, it's not, you know, not really going to have anything worth salvaging. And, in honest, here it's actually a very playable game. It's a very fun run, run gun blaster. And it was made available for, you know, for a budget price. So you actually got something half decent. Which, like, honestly, is... When you consider things, I mean, 1989 is kind of the point where... That sucker. Mm. Yeah, you, when you consider things, 1989 was kind of the point where Houston was starting to tumble as a publisher, sadly. Um, ah, game over. You get into a trap like that very quickly, and that's kind of where things are a little frustrating. It's a brutal game. You didn't even get the score table that time. On the other hand, this tile music by Maniacs of Noise is amazing. So I might let it run for a bit, but. Yeah, so you've got those weapons. And of course it's always you use funky keys to switch them. And then to use them you hold them down R-type style, you see the little bar go up. And And you've got to manage it. It's a very hard game. The instructions aren't really that good, probably because of this whole this whole mutant um, development process. But it's really well put together, and I, I, I kind of wonder how things would have been had the original design sort of been left to develop as it was, or you know, or if it was going to be pared down, given a bit more, a little bit more time in the oven. It's kind of a bit of a shame. Sometimes mysteries are, and you know, sometimes maybe it's a bit less untold. Do you have that double jump, which is? I'm not really double jump, more an infinite jump, because you just sort of plow it up, which you need to, to reach the exits. And yeah, there are elements of the original design in the game, things like the fact that, you know, you can actually, if you wanted to, watch this, you can actually go back. You don't have any reason to, because you're supposed to be escaping, you're not supposed to be retreating. Um, yet you can still go back to these earlier sections. And I remember seeing, like, in that special version of the special development code that was put out, you can actually see, like, the map in game. Part of the, yeah, you know, part of the system is to include a map, and there's just so much detail, so much of a, you know, of a world space. Oh, let's get in there a little further. Ah, oh, okay. Now, yeah. oh, damn it! This third screen is going to be is going to be the end of me, isn't it? Yeah, I got that sucker. Okay. Okay. No, 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 back! Okay. Alright. One, two. No! It's a brutal game. It's really good fun. It's just really brutal. Um, you've got to really master those weapons, and I think that's kind of very unique twist compared to a lot of other run and gun style games on the 64. It's has a very weird development history, it's very unconventional, but you know what? As a budget release, it's pretty unsolid. So that is Zimzara. Do check it out. I think it's one that's worth checking out pretty easy. Being a budget game, it's pretty easy to find. Um, it was also on Commodore formats, one of Commodore formats comes up. So you can probably find it there, and I think that's where a lot of people discovered it, <laughs> to be honest. And as always, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. 
If you did, please leave a comment and some, you know, some of your thoughts if you played it or if you haven't and plan to. Um, likes and thumbs ups are always important as well to help you know, get the message out there. Um, and if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to me. You know, I publish new videos every Friday, the occasional bonus one. And I hope you tune in for some more AP goodness. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.